Hello, this is Don, and uh, before I get started, here's Scott. Well, welcome to the nearly historical railroad. I would like to give thanks to uh, Big Bill for that wonderful cup of coffee that I got to enjoy. And uh, I'm just sitting here at my house right now. It's not much. I got my layout right here, which is just a four by seven piece of plywood with a circle track. And uh, just enjoying some time with my, my cats and uh, still calling my friends to see what they're up to. All right, well, enjoy the new video. All right, so that is Scott. Uh, he mentioned something about having coffee with uh, Big Bill and our state has officially given us a, a stay at home order, our governor has, um, but to see what that's about, check out Big Bill's video here from the South Brooklyn Railroad. Um, it was, we, we've just been kind of having fun with this whole thing. So uh, along those lines, if you want, you don't have to, um, I want you to, uh, well, I want you to go to my webpage. <laughs> Bet you didn't know I had one. I didn't know either, hardly. I never used it. So anyways, go to uh, nhrailroad.com and you can find this picture, this little poster of Scott. Scott is here. Um, he's been hanging out with Big Bill. So I want you to right click on that, do save as, whatever. Download that picture, uh, print it out, and uh, hang it in your train room somewhere. And then uh, take a picture of it and I want you to email it to me. I set up an email address. It's scottishere at mail.com. Take a picture, email me it, and uh, or or shoot a video, a YouTube video, post it online, send me the link, and I'll be sure to uh, reference it in one of my videos some way or another. Just having a little fun during this uh, stay-at-home time. And um, well, uh, with that in mind, um, the video that you're gonna see right after this little segment, I actually recorded previously before we had our stay-at-home order. So uh, we're gonna check that out. And I was actually out at my dad's house, uh, Scott, nobody else was there, but I was there. So we're gonna do that. Future videos, uh, like the next one uh, next week, still got a video coming. My dad's been sending me in uh, videos from the train room, he's still doing some stuff. So I'm gonna uh, still try, probably uh, keep videos coming to you guys one way or another. Who knows what it's gonna be about. So anyways, uh, hope you enjoy this uh, video from the last time I was out there. All right. Thanks a lot. on from the uh, nearly historical railroad channel so um well it's still a crazy world out there so i think uh, oh it's uncomfortable I, I think tonight it's just gonna be my dad and i um everyone else i think is staying at home and uh that's fine that's good so um once again though my dad has done some stuff and accomplished some things while i was gone well because he lives here and he can come out here whenever he wants a little bit of a drive for me. Anyways, um, one of those things I wanted to show you, actually, is uh, this. This is back here. Check it out. Let me oh, let me show you. This thing. Ooh. Uh, so I might have just misspoke a little bit. Um, I said that my dad had done what I was pointing out, but uh, actually, it was his wife that did most of all that work. Uh, he did help with some of it, but mainly it was his wife. So thank you, you know who you are, for doing that for us. Okay, let me show you guys what, what they did. So this is uh, the area that we've kind of been calling Downey. Um, but what we really want to see is this over here. They have added this curtain skirt thing all along the front of this. And this makes it look much cleaner and nicer. They've been planning this for quite a while. And uh, well, there it is. I like it, it looks great. So again, thank you, dad's wife. All right, so the other, 
So I haven't really shaved since I started working from home. I've never done this before, it's kind of weird. Uh, anyways, so my dad has also been working on other stuff and I will show you that, it's over at Cimarron. Oh, and uh, before I get to that, in the last video, my dad was laying down some wood to kind of bring the ground kind of more up to the height of the track and right at the end we decided, yep, that's great, but it's too tall. So we <laughs> went with something else. So that's what he did uh, while we were gone. So let's check that out. All right, so this is the uh, town that we're calling Cimarron because, well, this tower says Cimarron on it and the station says Cimarron on it. So we're going with that. Anyways, let's back out and take a look at this. So what he ended up doing is uh, we had some quarter, is it eighth inch? Eighth inch um, plywood that we had. Year, particle board, something like that. Years ago, I had a big green screen and stuff set up in this room before we had this much layout and I used this wood and I painted it green. And that's why the wood is green. We didn't paint it that way. It was already painted that way. So uh, he's got this road in and he raised this all up. This is all painted now, but this is an eighth inch higher. And if we look at the main street here, he added another eighth inch piece here and uh, trimmed out some driveways on it. And we're just gonna make that the sidewalk. So uh, again, we didn't paint the road green. The wood was already green. Uh, and he also kind of filled in stuff here. We may end up doing some kind of retaining wall or something, but there's something there for now. And uh, we'll just look over this way. Oh, what did you use uh, to fill this with? What is this? Oh, so we just he just used some plastic wood to uh, bring this kind of up to elevation because we wanted the road to kind of go up to the track a little bit. And he actually also got some uh, balsa wood or base wood, whatever you want to call it, in here to get the crossing started. Uh, and again, more sidewalk there and driveways. And there's not a lot of room for this station, but we may extend this platform out this way. Uh, and another neat idea too, because you got the station right here, and right there's the diner. So, right, come on, right there's the diner. So what we're, um, what Dad was thinking of doing is putting a set of stairs that go up right here. So you can walk up and go to the diner and get to the station. So that, this is turning out nice. I really like this. And I like that we have kind of a little difference in elevation. We had to, because we had to have this main line drop down to match up behind me. Uh, this is working really nicely. And uh, our idea also is to be putting in uh, some kind of junk yard, hopefully in this area right here. We were gonna have a little bit more room, but we decided just to run the roads through there, but there's still room for it. So this will be grain, obviously, and junkyard access uh, that's inspired by uh, Big Bill, of course. So, and we happen to have cars with scrap metal and stuff in them, so that works out very well. And uh, he's kind of got the grain elevators, right? That's what they are in this spot. And it's cool because from a lot of angles, it blocks the fact that that track goes in the wall. We can't hide it completely, but it uh, definitely looks better. And we're still kind of playing with where the water tower is going to go, but, but we're making like really good progress. This is pretty cool. And this road here, I'll just show you. Um, it's going to go down here. It's a little steep, whatever. Or this is just going to go under the tracks here. We're going to put kind of a bridge type of thing. Um, I'll show you. It's probably this type of bridge. Right, so that will uh, just kind of go right there and that will go underneath. And what's cool is we actually have a tunnel, you know, for this road that comes in or goes in right there. So you can imagine that that tunnel goes in there, pops out there. We'll just never mind the fact that this tunnel actually goes in and hooks around to the right, but you know, so you go in that tunnel, it takes you about two hours to get back out and come out over there. I don't know. Maybe it's a helix, who knows? So <laughs> that's okay. So this is really cool. I'm quite happy with this. I'm excited to see how it turns out. It's already turned out really nice. So I think we're gonna try and paint some road, or my dad is, on that. 
so dad's starting to move buildings out he's going to try and start painting this but <laughs> he's just telling me you know the chicken or the egg thing uh paint the sidewalk first or the road first and we're going to try and paint the road first uh then the sidewalk so my dad got pretty far with all that type of stuff got this curtain thing hung up with the help of his wife um I don't know, I just let him work on the layout. Maybe I won't do anything. I'll just watch him. He's going good. No, no. Kenosha Pass. I've got that one rail to put in, and uh, last time I was hoping to get both rails in. I mean, it's only like two and a half, three feet, but yeah, that was kind of a pain. Was, let, let me show you onto the narrow gauge. So this is Alpine Station. This is the, going to be the Palisades. And right here, is the one section of track that I'm trying to get in place. So, I got one rail in, need to do the second rail. Let me show you the issue though. This is uh, uh, this is pine, and sometimes it's easy to get spikes in and sometimes not. This is my pile of bent spikes, trying to get them into that wood. I should not have this pile of spikes, but I do. And I have what I have, so I'm just gonna keep going with it. See if I can get this rail in. All right, essential tools to handling track. The track gauge, this is an HON3 track gauge. These little track gauge holder thingies helps hold the rails kind of in place so you spike them, them down. And my favorite pair of pliers for putting spikes in. It's like the grooves in here, they just fit a spike perfect. And sp spikes, I need spikes. Sp spikes are over there, okay. Uh, you've all seen me plug spikes in, so I'm gonna skip that part of the video for you. <laughs> Isn't that nice? All right. Uh, forward. Here we go. Uh, yeah, you don't really need to sit here and watch me do all this. Uh, if it was Scott, it might be more entertaining, but I don't think he's coming tonight. Uh, so anyways, here we go. Get back to you in just a minute. Reminds me of something. Just, just a second. Uh, uh, someone, look, that's probably not in focus. Okay, uh, yeah, somebody had asked a question in one of the comments, and I answered it in the comment, but um, I'll go ahead and tell you what my answer was and what the question was, real quick. Uh, okay, so I don't remember exactly what the question was, but roughly. So, uh, the question was, was this. Why is it that all the hand laid track is not really on any roadbed? See, not really any roadbed. It's just kind of right on the ground pretty much. And again up here, not really built up much at all. Um, flex track, and it is built up. So the real difference is not necessarily that this is hand laid track, but more the fact that it's narrow gauge track. And this is not so much that it's flex track, but it's standard gauge track. Again, that's built up. So back when I was a teenager, I had a, a really great model railroader um, take some time with me and he showed me how to make mountains and, and stuff. And he was just such a great modeler. He's no longer around anymore. Uh, his name was Dal Dodge for what it's worth. But um, so I made this little narrow gauge layout and I made it run off of a computer way before DCC and all that type of stuff. It was pretty rudimentary, but it worked. It impressed people, especially because of my young age. It was cool. Wish I still had the layout around. Anyways, back to whatever it was I was talking about. What was it? before I started talking about myself. Um, <laughs> oh, so we were talking about narrow gauge because it was a narrow gauge layout and he helped me build this layout. And I wanted to put 
road bed under it. And he's like, no, no. He's like, a lot, most of the time, narrow gauge railroads didn't really build their track up much. They pretty much just kind of graded it and laid it down. And, and, uh, and later in life, uh, researching stuff with the Colorado Southern Railroad, um, I have learned also that a lot of times they just put dirt. They just, let me show you. Uh, this is not actually an example of it, but I'm just using my finger. A lot of times they would just put dirt kind of down the center of this and kind of pile it a little high. Then over time it would kind of settle and kind of come out that way and come out that way. And it wasn't even like gravel necessarily. It was just kind of dirt. So, so yeah, a lot of narrow gauge stuff wasn't really raised up. Right. Uh, so in my kind of research at looking at stuff, I've kind of seen pictures that actually kind of show that where it's just pretty much level. Um, so this one example, this is a Como. And if you notice that, uh, this isn't even really built up at all. It's uh, almost looks like there's no gravel either. It's just laying right on the ground pretty much. So that's what I've seen. That's what I've noticed. Yeah, does that look familiar? All right, so that's my little bit of info on roadbeds, the lack thereof or whatever. So you may have just learned something, or you might be saying, Don, you're completely wrong. You don't even know what you're talking about. But I like to think I know what I'm talking about. So <laughs> take it or leave it. There you go. So I've got about eight spikes in. In the meantime, dad paved the whole town. <laughs> uh, I just thought I'd explain this a little bit. So this here is just going to be, you know, like one lane going in, one lane coming out. Uh, and then when it gets into town, it'll widen out. So there's some parking spaces on each side of the street. So that's why it's wider there. And then it gets narrower. Okay, I got the second rail in, but just to get from Point A to point B. I bent this many spikes. Don't ask about the staple in there. Frustrating? Yes, it is. But, but, I do not want this to discourage you from handling track because I actually really like it. And the only reason I had problems is because I was putting spikes into pine. Doesn't work out great. The whole lot. All of this existing narrow gauge layout that you see was spiked down directly into wood. It's this kind of wood. I just don't know what this kind of wood is. It's not pine. But putting spikes into this is actually really nice. It goes right in, the spike is nice and snug. It's wonderful. I just haven't really been able to figure out what type of wood this is. Thought about taking it to a metallurgist, I mean a, a lumberjack, to uh, figure out what it is. And in my past life, I, I might have been able to tell you what it was, but I don't know. So. Hand lay track, just make sure you can put spikes into whatever material you're spiking into. And it's fun, it's kind of relaxing. All right, uh, I don't know what we're doing next. Let's look at that curtain from this side. It is so much better. Oh, it looks nice. Back to Cimarron. Um, after my dad painted this, uh, he decided that this right here was still kind of rough. So he came back and sanded it and uh, smoothed it out even more and painted it again. So this, this is progress. I like it. Here's one more look at Cimarron for the night. So we still have green sidewalks, but hey, the road got paved. We get, went ahead and moved the buildings back in, threw some cars around a little bit. 
Who knows where the buildings will end up for sure, but we're kind of liking this. This is a police department here, so a little driveway right here. They can come and park back here next to the old Cimarron Tower. I'm liking this. Little junkyard over here still. We'll get that in there. I like it. All right, so I'm not gonna wire that up right now. My main goal was just to get both rails in, and I did that. So later on we'll wire it and test it. Don't wanna get the soldering iron out and all that stuff. So anyways, we made progress though, this is good. Um, I think I'm headed home. So be safe out there, and uh, you know what? Just wash your hands like your mom and dad have always told you to do, and you'll be fine. Maybe I'm not a medical professional, don't take my word for that. Okay, so anyways. We'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Ring the little bell for notifications when new videos come out. Thanks to all you guys that have subscribed and leave comments and stuff. That's all cool. Okay, yeah, that's it. All right, thanks for watching. Bye. Got a cat coming over. <laughs> are you in the frame or not, cat? There you are. All right. So, anyways, um, Big Bill's been having some fun with this, and, and what we're gonna hold on. I'm gonna start this over now. Of course. With every train layout, there's always a kitty cat, and uh, this is a, this is Anubis. Just to let you know, our state has officially given us a uh, stay-at-home order. So that's why uh, you saw that little video from Scott. He's been texting me some stuff, uh, and you'll see little bits of Scott here and there. And my God, kitty, you're shedding a lot. This is a good shirt. Now oh, oh. yeah. later. Okay. I will uh, say this. I don't know where I'm going. I just lost my spot. What am I? My God, this stuff is growing. It's growing. So Scott's been sending me some uh, text and some text in the some. Bleh.